The Lorax by Dr. Seuss At the far end of town, where the crinkle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing excepting all crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the crinkle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today. Where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could. Before somebody lifted the Lorax away. Hmm, what was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the crinkle grass grows? The old one still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the one Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum Call under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of Miff Mufford Moof. And on special dark midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss a 15 cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes the most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snuff, his secret strange hole in his gravulous glove. Then he grunts, I'll call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Dong slaps the whisper of phone to your ear, and all onesless whispers are not very clear. Since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding grey, now the Lorox got lifted and taken away. It all starts way back, such a long, long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean. And the song of the swarmy swans ran out in space one morning, I came to this glorious place. And I first saw the trees, the truffler trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffler trees. Mile away, mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barber lutes frisking about in their barber lute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle of fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffler trees. All my life I've been searching for trees like these. 
the touch of their troughs was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'll do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. And with a great skillful skill, with a great speedy speed, I took a soft tuff and I knitted a knead. The instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of a stump of the tree I chopped down. It was a sort of man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. Hmm, he was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sore dusty sneeze, I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues and I am asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffler tough? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a seed. A seed is a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it's other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool feed. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the teed I knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole once the family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken. Sharp right at Sword Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wansler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting feeds, just busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh boy, baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making the needs four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore.
But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you pleased. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbalutes, who are played in the shade in their barbaluch suits, and happily lived eating truffle of fruits. No thanks to your hacking, my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to go round. And my poor babaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here. But I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried and he sent them away. I, the one love, felt sad. As I watched them all go, but business is business and business must grow, regardless of crummies and zombies, you know. I meant no harm, I mostly truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the tanins I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more threads, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back, I was fixing some pipes, when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. <coughs> I am the Lorax. He coughed and he whiffed, he sneezed and he snuffled, he snarled and he sniffed. Once, La, he cried, with a cruffless croak. Once, La, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swarmy swarms, why they can't sing a note? No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They can't live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog. You've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His danger was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Club. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop making gluppity glup, also slappity slap. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, your dirty old one slamans, you. You're glumping the pond with a humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their girls are all crumbed. So I'm sending them off. Or oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fence and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at that Lorax, listen here dad, all you do is yap yap and say bad 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, so, and I'm telling you, I intend to go doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring. 
on biggering, on biggering, and biggering, and biggering. Turning more truffle trees into seeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle tree of them all. No more trees, no more threads, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke, smuggled stars. Now all that was left, neat the bad smelling sky, was a big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance, and he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of his place, through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant. Well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Wansler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better, it's not. So, catch, calls the Wansler. He let something fall. It's a truffle of seed. It's the last one of them all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds. And the truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle. Treat it with care. Give it its clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. <laughs>